So we're going to do a makeup look today, <laughs> but there's a twist. I had a request from Jane Said, and she says, you are, uh, I'll, I would love to know the top five mistakes women of age or any age make when applying makeup. That's the first request. She's got two requests. So we're going to do that one today and we'll do the, her other requests tomorrow. So I'm going to begin with my eyeshadow primer and Therein lies the first mistake. A lot of women think they can just speed through this and go straight to the shadow and not put an eyeshadow primer on. The eyeshadow primer gives you a nice, clean, even canvas to create your eye look on. It also helps prevent your shadows from creasing. It helps to keep them their true color. It also makes them more vivid. It also gives the shadows, sometimes if you need to, it gives the shadows something to stick to, to which to stick. So I'll always, I always do an eyeshadow primer. It gives it a nice, clean, even canvas to work on. All right, I'm gonna to move to the eyeshadows. Another thing that I have seen when I'm doing a makeup lesson and I let them do their own, start to do their own shadow first. If they have a hooded lid they will take a, a, even if you don't have a hooded lid, they take this, this highlight color too far down. And it makes, it makes the, this part look more bulge. It doesn't contour the eye. So the highlight color is too wide. So I'm going to take that off. Well, actually, I'm going to put some on this side and smooth it off this side too so that my look will be the same. All right. I'm going to contour. I think this is important to contour the, the eye to give it shape so it doesn't look like a, a big fluffy marshmallow over your eyeball. You don't have to use a color this vivid. You can just use like your bronzer. I'm using the Natasha Denona Sunrise Palette. See, I'm contouring the eye, giving the eye a shape. Looks like it's three-dimensional and not just a big fluffy Poof. A big poofy eyelid over the, over the top of my eyeball. And then I'm blending. All right. Now, a color for the lid. I think I'm going to use Laurel. And I'm going to deepen deepen the outside corners by patting that shadow on instead of swiping it on so I can get some depth. All right. At this point, I always move to brows. That helps me to frame in or to get some perspective to how to finish the eyelid. So I'm taking a brow, uh, a soft, very soft toothbrush and brushing my eyebrows up. And then I'm gonna take some 
lash primer and this is not a must for mature or to keep from making a mistake. This is just a preference on my part for a bolder brow. A mistake for, I think this makes women look older and funny looking, like something's missing, is for their brows to be too short. The, look, starting them right here. All this in the front being missing. I would say every, every mature woman and many young women that I do their makeup, I have to extend the brow in because it's missing. And I'll put a picture right here of how funny I look before I started drawing the fronts on my eyebrows. I knew, I knew there was something wrong, but I wasn't quite sure how to fix it. So leaving off the front of your brow is a, is, or putting it on there is a game changer. And I'm using the Brow Gal Brow Powder. You don't have to use one this expensive. This one's like $35 at Nordstrom. It's really good though. It's really good brow powder. You can just use an eyeshadow. All right, now I'm gonna put some brow glue in there. This, this Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter, I believe holds, holds the brow powder in on too. So your brows don't fade during the day. Everyone benefits from taking a brow, an eye shadow and stamping it along the lash line to make those bottom lashes look thicker. Benefits. It's not a big mistake to leave it off though. I wouldn't take it that far. You can definitely use a, a more natural color, like maybe your bronzer. I'll show you that when we get there. So I'm taking that same color that I've been using, which is Clove from the Natasha Denona Sunrise Palette. It is, it is indeed the Sunrise Palette. I think she has a Sunset Palette too, but this one's the Sunrise Palette. Okay, I'm going to take a brighter, uh, I'm going to take Jasper and take that inside the clove. Just trying to brighten up this look. My looks have been subdued lately and I'm ready to get back to the exciting eye looks. This one is citrine. And I'm going to take a flat concealer brush and put Laurel back where I covered it up some so that Jasper will just be poking out. All right, now I'm gonna move on to eyeliner and I'm going to take the Blackest Black from Maybelline and I'm going to, I think women all benefit from some eyeliner. You don't have to make it a wing, but dotting some, 
dotting some liner in between the lashes is definitely flattering. Okay, so while the camera was cooling off, I worked on my face. So I, if you have dry skin, you need to moisturize so that your foundation will go on creamy looking. A dry, crepey foundation is not good. Even if you're using a long wear like soft matte, I recommend to moisturize under it and kind of act Pretend like you're going to counteract the matteness. It's, but it'll still be a long wear foundation for you. If you're an oily teenager, then you don't moisturize. I also used, this is a great primer. I, I recommend a primer. And for mature women, this one's a fantastic one, the Liquid Tatcha Silk, Silk Canvas, the Liquid Silk Canvas. Then I used a, this foundation is the Liquid Mineral Foundation from Youngblood. And I used the Beauty Blender to apply it and I kept it pretty damp. I didn't squeeze it out real good. A mistake is to not work, not blend long enough and to not use enough foundation. So I kept blending and blending and blending. And I like a bright uh, under eye. That I think is probably a, a personal preference, but I think it makes you look more rested. And then you can draw it up and blend it upwards like this that gives you a more wide awake look also. Contour. I don't think you have to, I don't think mature women have to avoid, I don't think anybody has to avoid contour, even if you have a skinny face. I think it adds a little je ne sais quoi to the look. Just if you don't, if you have a skinny face, just go, go lighter with it. I'm going to take a contour brush. This is a no-name brand. I highly recommend the e.l.f. one. And I'm using the Hula bronzer as my contour. And that is a good, it's the original one. That is a good bronzer to you use a good color to use if you're just starting out and you are afraid of contouring. I think we all benefit over 50 if your forehead's getting bigger to contour in there real good. It just makes it look like you have a fuller hairline. I like to do this to tighten up the jawline, regardless of whether you need it or not. I think it's, a, it's not a mistake to leave it off. But I think it's, a, it's beneficial. See? I think a blush, the placement, I don't think the color matters so much as the placement. For example, the circle right in the front is kind of baby, whatever happened to baby Jane or whatever. I think it's more youthful or it is not as garish for the blush to be up high like that. A 
opposed to that. That draws the face up, this kind of ball. So I'm going to fix that by pouncing it. It's my little eraser. And this color that I'm using is from Urban Decay. It's really bright like this, and the name of it is Crush. And if it's discontinued, I'll link a similar one right in the, in the description box. So yeah, up high. Since the shadows are so warm and my blush is so cool, I'm running it into my eyeshadow to make it make it look like a a color story. I think this is youth youthful to put some blush there. If you have if you're a rosé all day type of girl and you have broken capillaries around your nose, be sure and camouflage those with some with some, some concealer. Another thing to do is if you have marionette lines on the side. Use a brightening, correcting concealer out there. It's not a mistake to not do it though. I think it's a mistake to leave your dilated capillaries evident though. And I think it's definitely a mistake to leave your eyebrows, the fronts of your eyebrows off. I'll leave a picture of that again right there. I like to go in good with mascara. I think mascara is youthful looking. I think fluffy lashes add a lot. And if you have eyelids that touch your eyelashes and it makes and it makes a mess use waterproof sit there and look down while they dry i think under eye like i said before i think under eye concealer brightening concealer is a i think leaving that off is a mistake i don't know whether i said it was a mistake before or not i think using a dark lipstick is a mistake on mature women. I'm going to go find a lip liner. Oh, I think, I don't think it's a mistake on everybody. I think it's just a mistake on older women. If you have small, if you're older, your lips are shrinking it, most often. And just like they say, you know, wearing black makes you look slimmer. So is wearing dark lipstick, it makes your lips look smaller. This color is Soar. It just happens to be a flattering color on me. Let's see. I'm going to use a different... Wow, I got lots of lip glosses. I'm going to use them. Let's try this one. That color is Funtabulous, I think. I'm going to put a a lipstick over the top. Alright, and I was talking about defining the bottom lash line a little bit even if you just did it with a little bit of the all the things that are signs of aging 
like your lashes getting thin, your brows getting shorter. I'm taking the hula. Those are the, th this is hula and I'm just defining my bottom lash line with it. Those are the things you want to, you want to pay special attention to if you're maturing or the things that are changing because of your maturing. Like your lips thinning to make them look fuller would make you look, to, to make them look even thinner would be a mistake. If you're Skin is modeled due to age, then you need to fix it. You need to spend a little extra time on your foundation. If you have broken capillaries around your nose, you need to spend a little more time camouflaging those. Ignoring the, the little details is a mistake. All right, I think it makes a difference. It's not a mistake to leave it off, but I think it makes a difference to put a, a brightener on the waterline. And it's good to find one that sets up quickly so it doesn't bleed into your, wick into your eyes. Okay, so let's count and see if I got five. The first thing was, I don't remember. Oh, to use a concealer under your, it's a mistake to not use a, a primer underneath your eyeshadow. It's a mistake to use too much white and not contour. Let's put it this way. The second one is it's a mistake to not contour your eyes. It is a mistake to not enhance your lash line, both the top and the bottom. Smudge a little liner in there or go full on liner because you, you lose your lashes as you get older, as you age, or they become gray, and that makes you look older. It's a mistake for, to, to leave off the front of your brows. And five, it's a mistake to put dark lipstick on thin lips. Okay, I hope that was helpful. I will leave some links in the description box of some products I think would be helpful. And tune in again for Jane Said's second part of her request. What would be your top five favorites when buying makeup? drugstore and high-end. Stay tuned for that video and we'll see you again tomorrow night. Ta-ta!